Hi guys, this is my second live video, um, so bear with me. But I didn't want too much time to pass before I started talking about parental control of eating. So, you know, in my previous video, I discussed when is too much control or what is too much control and what is too little. It's really hard to define what's too much control, um, but Basically, if you feel like your child is starting to eat alone, sneak food, um, hide um, when they're eating or feel embarrassed when they're eating, there may be too much parental control of eating. At least you should evaluate if you feel like you are doing something like that. So kids, children exposed to parental control of feeding, they are more likely to be shamed. Um, then they tend to overeat because they start eating even when they're not hungry. At least that's what the studies show. And then they gain weight. So eating in the absence of hunger is not something that we want to promote. It's kind of backfiring when we're trying to give too much control of what they're eating and asking and watching and looking at their plate, it develops in their psyche that they can't eat in front of their parents and it makes them want to eat more. So this is more about the psychology of eating. And I basically recommend, you know, controlling what your children eat by limiting the processed foods that's in the house. So there's no discussion there's no negative language. It's just changing what's available in the home. So I have a good webinar. It's an older webinar posted on the Facebook page about changing be eating behaviors in your family. And that's something good to look over because I talk about um, doing like a food pantry check and removing all the processed foods, picking a day on the calendar and saying, okay, this is the day that I'm gonna go food shopping and we're gonna start over. So once you do that, you know, I talk about, well, if there are apples and potato chips as a snack, of course, we're all going to pick the potato chips. But if they're apples and oranges as a snack, well, there's only a healthy option. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to look over your kid's shoulder because you know the options are healthy. So keep healthier options in the house. And that's a great way to restrict the way your child is eating, at least in the home. Um, whoever does the grocery shopping is responsible for your family's um, home health. You cannot control what they're getting in school or what they're getting from friends, but you surely can control what they're eating in the home and what's available to them. So that's a great thing to do. Um, also to look at your language when you're talking to your kids about what they're eating. So for example, a parent might say, you know, don't eat that. It's going to make you fat and you know you're already getting big or something like that would not be the language to use. That is the language that puts them to shame and then makes them want to sneak the food. Um, better language would be, um, oh, you st are you still hungry? Do you want second servings? Well, why don't we go for the meat and the vegetable because it will help you feel fuller longer and um, it's actually healthier instead of having you know, the extra serving of something that's processed or um, something that's high um, carb. So um, please comment below about some of the language that you hear, whether it was from yourself, a friend, family members that, you know, may have rubbed you the wrong way or you kind of cringe because you feel sorry for the child who is listening to the language. And we know that most of the time it's being said out of love and fear. Um, the parents tend to feel like they are not in control and they're so fearful um, that their child might get diabetes or have issues from weight. And so the language that comes out becomes um, negative when it's not meant to be negative. Um, what else? I have some things that I jotted down here. Um, eating in the absence of hunger was more common in girls, um, more common in middle class and non-Hispanic white females. So um, that's just a little statistics for you. So um, girls may be more prone to have these behaviors. Um, 
So I think that's all. I'm going to cut it short today, but this is the beginning of me talking about eating behaviors. But do know too much restriction can be bad. Um, you can restrict by just changing the environment without words at all. And of course, any parent might limit their child's eating by saying, hey, you already had one piece of cake. No, you cannot have two. I'm not saying that you cannot, um, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like restrict them and give them boundaries in certain, in certain situations. But when it becomes like chronically um, the focus of discussions in the house, um, it becomes negative. Um, so please let me know your thoughts and I'm going to finish this um, live video. Bye.